Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's been a while since I, the Lord gave me a little bit of a laugh, and it's been a while since I made a video defending the Godhead. I love, I make, I'm always about standing for God's word. King James Bible. I had someone, you can barely see the banner behind me, King James Bible. They said that that's a, um, what's the word, but King James Bible. I'm a King James Bible believer. And I love standing, standing for the Word of God. Idol. They said that was an idol behind me. When it's just a banner, it's a piece of paper. I can burn it. You can tear it apart. Nothing. It just represents the fact that the King James Bible is God's perfect written Word. Right? But um, under Brother Brian's video, How to Spot a Hireling and Minister of Satan. Okay, it's funny that he'd do a video like this. And I got into a, a discussion about the Godhead versus the Trinity, and how to spot a higher, not a hireling, but in a minister Satan, how to follow somebody who claims to be a Bible believer that isn't a Bible believer. All right, let's see if we can find the comment. He got, I was about to say, he got a lot of comments, 103 comments. I was like, I'd never, in my, in my videos, I'd never break up. I would never even get close to 100 comments. I think the max I ever had once was like 20 to 25. Here it is. All right. Uh, trying to use the program. So hopefully it's big enough for everybody can read it. But it says here, uh, Brian, don't take this the wrong way, but you're kind of being nitpicky. Now, if you want to watch this study, remember, I'm not trying to critique Brian's study. If you want to go watch this video, I'll put a, I always put, try to put a link down at the bottom to the videos that I'm using and talking about. Um, in this video, he just talks about, uh, gosh, I forgot the guy's name, but a false teacher, okay, false preacher, servant of Satan, and he tries to show you some things. But in this video, if I can get back to where we were, Mr. Christian says, but Brian, don't take this the wrong way, but you're kind of being nitpicky. More people are coming around about this, and you are chastising them for not doing it fast enough. Be happy it's even happening. That was our goal, wasn't it? To help others understand what this really is. Take whatever win you can get, as there are very few these days. Also, as a fellow YouTube minister, it helps to let the video play longer to get a fuller context so more folks understand where your frustration is. Just trying to help, but not expecting this to be received well. Thanks for reading and considering. Okay? This has to do with the video. Okay, There's a guy in the video. He's pretending to be a Christian. He says some of the right things. I apologize for some of this stuff, but when you look under certain vehicle, uh, when you're looking up certain things, weird stuff comes up. Video games, that's the worst one. I look under my video that I did about video games. Are you still playing video games? Or any of my videos or someone else's brother's videos that has the word video game in it on the right side. Just tons of things about, check out this video game, this video game, this video game, and just all over. So, I had a sister in Christ uh, link something to me about, uh, they were trying to say about the presidents. And uh, it was based off a of movie. And next thing you know, I'm getting junk. I'm always having to say, not interested. Just a side note. So one of my things I normally do and I didn't do this time was I always try to go through and make sure there's no junk over here to lead people astray. So yeah, I thought I could pray the gay away. And he's got red hair. Um, anyway, back over here to the point of this video. Sorry, brother, this is Christ. I saw this and I was like, I was just curious. And I looked at the person's channel. Now I always tell people this, if you go to here, uh, and they show all this. I have a little, even though some people are subscribed to everybody under the sun, which means they're they got problems because there's a lot of things they're they're subscribed to. A lot of people that are fleshly, they're sinful, they're wicked. But a lot of people hide this. But that's not what I looked at. I looked at video, and I was like, oh, what kind of teachings does he have? And I got down here, and the second teaching right here says evening prayer, the Trinity. And you clicked on it, you can see the red there. I watched it only a little bit. The guy's for the Trinity, and he stands for the Trinity. So, we get into the comment section. All I put in is, do you still stand for the pagan Trinity? He just put out that video a couple days ago, but I like to ask. Okay? Do you still stand for the pagan Trinity? And then here's his thing. Do you mean the truth? 
yes, I believe in the truth. But notice he said, the truth. Yeah, singular, but what truth? The truth that comes from the Bible or the truth that comes from men? He just says, I believe in the truth. All right. And then he comes back and says, Bible believing and God fearing, but you don't believe in the deed of your own Savior, shame. All I said was, is, do you still stand for the pagan trinity? That's all I asked. He said, yes, he does. Then he comes back and attacks me. You don't believe in the deity of your own Savior. And then some brothers in Christ got in here, which, was, which uh, praise the Lord. Um, uh, Brother Philip absolutely believes in the deity of our Savior. The difference is he believes in the full deity of Christ. Amen. The Bible says that Je teaches that Jesus is God the Father, the soul. Okay, 1 Corinthians 8, 6 teaches that there's but one God, the Father. I, I've typed in a lot of scripture here shortly, so um, if something else comes to mind, I've got the Bible searcher there. But I do. I believe Jesus Christ is God fully and completely. But 1 Corinthians 8, 6 says there's but one God, the Father. When Jesus says, I and my Father are one, it's because in order for Jesus to be God, God the Father, the soul, has to be in him. It's that simple. Okay, they are one. And he's like, Mr. Christian says, so do I. And here's the thing that always gets me. If you believe that Jesus is fully and completely God, you will not believe in the Trinity. You'll believe in the Godhead of the King James Bible. But they always do this, so do I, so do I. No, you don't. No, you don't. If you vehemently defend the Trinity, God in three persons, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Father, three gods that make up one God, that's four gods. And don't even get me started with person, body, soul, and spirit, and then the teaching of nine gods. Okay. No, you don't. Okay. You do not. He just, we'll get, I'm getting ahead of myself. But he says, so do I. And then Bill Rader here says, praise God then. You've come to the truth of the Godhead instead of our, Godhead instead of our Savior only being one third deity. In other words, he's saying, you're getting rid of the Trinity then. You're going for the Godhead. Now here's what they do. Look at this. Look what he does here. It's so satanic and wicked and deceiving. He goes back to Bill Rader and says, Godhead equals Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's right. But the Father is the soul, the Son is the body, and the Holy Ghost is the Holy is the Spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. Then he comes down to Trinity and says, Trinity is the same thing, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's a lie. That's a total lie. They believe the Father has a, is a, a person, body, soul, and spirit. The Son is a person, body, soul, spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person, body, soul, and spirit. All right. Here he is. There's no issue unless we create one. He's creating it because he's adding the capital T Trinity for a title for God that's not in Scripture. And wait for it. It's not in Scripture. He slips up and says some things to show who his real authority is. All right. There's no issue unless we create one. He's creating one by adding to Scripture. And worshiping a false god. This argument among brethren is creating one. No, it isn't. We're standing for the word of God. Christians pick some of the dumbest things to argue over in a vain attempt to be right. Godhead, which teaches the true God, the true Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, capital L Lord, the Lord, and he tries to bring in Trinity, a pagan God, and that's the, it's just nitpicking, it's, it's the dumbest things to argue over. I'm standing for my Lord and Savior. He's not. Or he's standing for his Savior, which is Satan. Um, so Billy really comes back. I didn't get a chance. A lot of people just back and forth before I caught up to him. He says, if it were only that simple, you would be right. Godhead equals Jesus Christ is holy and fully God consisting of three things. Some people like to say the word members. I've been correct to say the word members is in the Bible. Trinity equals three co-equal gods, and it does. Trinity teaches that there are three gods that work together as one God. That's what the Trinity teaches. Now, there's some people, I've always said this, brothers and sisters in Christ, there are some people that believe in the Godhead of the Bible, but they're using terms brought in by man that you won't find in the Bible. We call them Trinity terms. They're not found in Scripture. 
Why? Because they have to come up with their own terms to justify the word Trinity as a title for God, because it's not in Scripture. I'm pointing at the Bible over here. Okay. They are not the same. I didn't have to say anything. Praise the Lord, someone else did. And if you don't believe, and if you don't believe in the three co-equal gods, then start using biblical terms, amen, and you won't confuse others. There will be no argument. Use the Bible words. No argument. And it's that simple. On a side note, I always get into it with some of the brothers because they still use uh, rapture. And I'm like, excuse me, I keep telling the brethren, stick to the word of God. Okay? Only use Bible words. Rapture, if you look up the definition of rapture, because it's not in Bible, so you have to go to the Webster's 1828 Dictionary and you find the word rapture and you look at the definitions, then you look at the Bible and look at where it talks about the catching up, the catching away, it's describing as if we're tripping and we're going to fall into some event and God goes, no, you're not going into that event. I'm going to catch you before you fall and I'm taking you up. Catching away. You look at the definition of rapture. It's being taken with violence of a pleasing nature by force. We're trying to run around. He's grabbing us by the leg like you beat those fish to keep them from flopping all over the place. He's just smacking us around. And then he takes us up. Is that what's going to happen? And I get on to that with people. So please, I have grace. I'm not saying you're lost if you use the word rapture, but I've talked to people. I'm always an advocate of pushing. If you say the Bible says, the Bible teaches, it better be in there. Whatever words you're using, they better be in Scripture. Okay. And here's, here's his true colors right here. All I have to do is believe, so do you. Chapter and verse where it's belief alone, kind of like faith alone, chapter and verse. That's a whole other thing, the plan of salvation, that people just get second heads, just believe alone. But what does this have to do with us telling him, please use the Bible? Capital T Trinity is not there. Stop using it. Convincing others isn't my job. See, he got proven wrong, showing that he's a liar and is a deceiver, and he's saying convincing others isn't my job. Uh, we're supposed to preach the word. The Bible says, I don't have that over there, so we'll go over here. Preach the word. Be instant in season. I know it by heart. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. I uh, probably should have put more down. There's preach the word. I want to get the address. 2 Timothy 4.2. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. He's saying it's not his job to convince others. Uh, yeah, our job is to preach the truth in a way that people will get convicted and convinced that this is the word of God. Now, if they say they don't want it, we're not car salesmen. I'm not there to force someone to believe. Okay. Either you believe the book, the book, God's Word says Godhead, either you believe it or you don't. Okay. The Word is clear. There it is, says it again. He, I hate when people put capital W on the Word is clear. Uh, if he's talking about Jesus, yes. But if he's talking about the written Word of God, it's a lowercase w, not a capital W. The Word is clear, so if you misunderstand a clear explanation, it's by choice. What are we missing? We'll get into it. It's by choice, and you must make the choice to change it. He did. He changed the Word of God. The Godhead is mentioned three times in Scripture. The Trinity, which takes nothing away from Christ, is described and referenced almost a hundred times. That's a lie, because they're lying. But here's the thing. If it's describing and referencing the Trinity a hundred times, you think God would have used the word Trinity. He's not an idiot. He's treating God like he's an idiot. God's not a fool. He would have chosen Trinity. It's not in there. All right. That's the whole point we're making. It's simple, but most of the time it's the simplest things that make people stumble. That's Jesuit, Jesuitical talk. Okay, It's not the simplest thing that makes men stumble. We're going to find out what makes men stumble when I finally get to make a comment. Uh, Billy Rader. And Billy, it is that simple. He made it that way on purpose. Wait, wait. Oh, stop for a second. 
It is that simple. He made it that way on a purpose. You know, the simplest thing would have been to put the word Trinity in the Bible. That would have been the simplest thing, right? Wouldn't it have been the simplest thing? It would have solved all the arguments in the world. Show me where capital T Trinity is in this book that you claim that this person claims to believe in. Where's it at? If it was that simple, he would have put capital T Trinity as a title for himself in his own word. It's not there. Uh, Mr. Christ says, he most certainly did make it that way on purpose. It is plain and simple. Godhead. Four times a member of the Godhead is referenced as a person, as Jesus Christ. God the Father is never referenced as a person, and the Holy Ghost is never referenced as a person. Jesus is the person of the Godhead. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, there is one God, the Father. So God the Father is in Scripture. God the Son is not. God the Holy Spirit is not. God did make it simple. They're the ones that are making it not simple, and they're trying to complicate things when they bring in their Trinity, pagan philosophy, trying to add it to Scripture. They're adding to the Word of God. Okay, let's go back. He most certainly did make it that way on purpose, and praise God that the one I serve is one. Praise the Lord. These things are only as hard as we make them. He's making it hard. By, I'm getting ahead of myself, but he's adding to the Word of God. I can only share Scripture, but since you guys have already seen them, I can only share this. And he does a link to one person, Holy Spirit. You know, Let's spend more time getting truth out there so people will get saved. We are preaching truth. He's not. The truth is, Godhead is the title for God. And him felt the fullness of the Godhead title bodily. Jesus Christ. He is the person of the Godhead. So I just kind of drawn out a little bit, but we get to I finally caught up to it because like I said, things were getting by faster than I can keep up. And I said, I told Bill Ray, I said, You are dealing with someone that is not a Bible believer, but a corrector. And he is. He's adding terms that aren't in the Bible, and he's adding a title for God that isn't in the Bible. The King James Bible reads Godhead and Acts, and I actually show it. He said that it's mentioned so many times, but I'm showing it. Acts 17, 9, 29. See if I can highlight these. Acts 17, 29, Romans 1, 20, and Colossians 2, 9. And you go here and you go, Godhead. Three times in the Bible. Trinity. Zero. Zero times. That's the issue here, brothers and sisters in Christ. He keeps saying, God has mentioned three times in the Bible, therefore Trinity's in the Bible. What are they doing? They're replacing the word Godhead with Trinity. So I went ahead and showed it the three times, but it should have said Trinity instead, according to Mr. Christian. I put in Chris. I hate when people use name, nicknames like that because it's like I'm not calling him a Christian. That's his name, Mr. Christian. Okay. For a Bible believer, this is where the conversation starts and it ends. It shouldn't have to go any farther than this. There should be no complication. Nobody's making it harder than it is because you keep saying it's so simple. It's not harder than it is and everything, okay? Where's Trinity at in the Bible? Then stop saying the Bible teaches a Trinity when capital T Trinity is not in the Bible at all. It's that simple. If you're a Bible believer and you believe that this book is God's perfect written word, tried in the fire seven times, as silver tried in the fire seven times, every word of God is pure, if you believe that, where's capital T Trinity for a title for God in the Bible? It's not there. And that's what I put down here. It said, for a Bible believer, this is where the conversation starts and ends. Do not need to go any further. Where in the KJV is capital T Trinity a title for God? It's not there, you say? I said it like that. If it's not there, you say? Then I will not use it. That's what a Bible-believing Christian says. It's not there. I won't use it. All right. It's that simple. Uh, Bill Rader said, Amen, brother. 
Piper LT comes in and says, truthfully, I thought one of you folks would say, post the verse with Trinity in the KJV Bible. I'll wait. If you cannot find it, stop using that word. And that's what I kind of, I didn't say it like that, but she said she was waiting for someone to say that. Okay, sister in Christ. And then Bill Rader comes back and says, hindsight, brother, but God willing, he will continue to grow my wisdom that his words might flow from my mouth at the right time. He's talking about how he's kind of talking and it's like, you did great, brother. You did great. Just stand for the word of God. Make sure you're quoting scripture a lot. That's my biggest thing, the advice I give to brethren. When you're making comments, use scripture. I'm putting my hand on the Bible. Use scripture. Okay. Always try to use scripture when you're talking about the Lord and his teachings and the word of God. A lot of people like to talk about the word of God. I've noticed this on a side note before we get back to this. I've noticed that a lot of comments, the reason I don't really take them that seriously is you've got someone comment, commenting back saying, you're wrong and this is right and this is wrong. It's all their own personal words and feelings. They don't quote scripture that much. A lot of the attacks I get are personal attacks because they can't deal with scripture. And then there are their own words. They try to take the Bible and put the Bible in their own words and say, this is what the Bible says, but they don't quote scripture. Okay. Just the Lord, you know, will help open your eyes and heart and give you the right words. And you did great. Okay. Okay. Then this is the thing that gets me. Piper LT. This is what drives it home. You want to know somebody who claims to be a Bible believer that's not a Bible believer. This is what drives it home, brothers and sisters in Christ, at the very top. Piper LT, he, this Mr. Christian, says, you have, to the sister in Christ, you have no authority. I'll use whatever terms I want. Let that sink in. Then he goes on to say, go to another comment thread if you don't like it, because it's not about you, it's about him. I'll use whatever term I want. It's not, thus saith the Lord. It's thus saith Mr. Christian. And that's really what's going on. That's how you know he's not a Bible believer. He does not believe that this book is perfect. He's got to correct it. He'll use whatever terms he wants. He'll add to this book. I keep pointing out to you. He'll keep adding to this book any chance he gets. He'll subtract from this book any chance he gets. It's all about him making this book conform to him. He doesn't conform to the Bible. The Bible's got to conform to him. And his true colors just came out right there. I'll use whatever term I want. He didn't say, I'm going to stick to the Bible, and the Bible says Trinity. Why? Because he can't say that. We can. I'm going to stick to the Bible, and it's what God says. Not whatever term I want. It's what God says, and God said Godhead. They can't deal with it. Finally made another comment. Let's see. But that's what let it out just for this whole video. Listen to what he said there. I will use whatever term I want. He's the final authority. He's his own God. It's not thus saith the Lord. It's thus saith my preferences. I like the word Trinity. I'm going to use the word Trinity. The Bible doesn't use it. I don't care. He doesn't care about what the word actually says. He cares about what man says. I put down, you can have your God's plural, Trinity. I will stick to the Godhead, God, singular. And that's basically what it is. The brother in Christ already said it better up there, Billy Rader. Already said it. I serve one God, a risen Savior who is God fully and completely. One God. Not three gods that make one God. Not four gods. Not nine gods. One God. That's what the Godhead is. Galatians 3.20, oops, sometimes it's hard to highlight things, just so you know we're reading, read these verses. Galatians 3.20 says, now a meditator is not a meditator of one, but God is one. God is one. There is no God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and along with God the Father, three gods. God is one. Time and time again, one God, one God. 1 Timothy 2.5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. There's one God. 1 Corinthians 8.6 says, I keep preaching this, But to us there is but one God, the Father. 
of whom are all things and we in him, and one capital L Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things and we by him. One capital G, God the Father. God the Father is scriptural. God the Son is not. The Lord Jesus Christ is scriptural. God the Son is not. Now, people will say, well, you don't believe Jesus is God then. Turn to John, if you have the Bible, turn to John 10, 30. I and my Father are one. Okay. Some other, I think a brother down there put another comment down that quoted some verses that were great. But I and my Father are one. Jesus has God the Father, the soul that's inside him. That's what makes him God. There's only one God. That's the soul, the Father. Right? I do believe Jesus is God, but I believe Jesus is God fully and completely. He's not a lower. When you say, if you believe, if you go things, which they'll never do, and I've always te taught this, if you go with Scripture and you follow the laws and the way God does things, there's lowercase g gods and there's capital G gods. And the Bible doesn't, uh, doesn't contradict we just read there, but God is one. There is one God. If thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. There's only one capital G God. So the Trinity teaches that there's three lowercase g gods. You can't make them capital because then you call this book a lie. The lost world can do it all they want. I'm talking to people who claim to be a Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman. The moment you say God in three persons and you say God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, you make them three lowercase g gods. Because there's only one capital G God. That's the whole point. We believe in Jesus Christ who is God fully and completely one God. The Trinity people believe in multiple gods and then turn around and try to say, but, but it's just one God. I do believe Jesus is God. One God, singular. Titus, put down these verses. Titus 1.16, they profess that they know, capital G, God. This guy's trying to say, I know God. Z I mean God. He adds an S when he says Trinity. I, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. He's defending something so hardcore that's not in Scripture. He's going to die for a pagan trinity, capital T trinity, that's not in scripture. But in works, they deny it. He's not affirming who Jesus is. He's denying who Jesus is. Okay? By standing for the trinity. He's not God fully and completely. He's only the second member of the Godhead. He's a third of God. It's tearing Jesus down. Okay? But in works, they deny, they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient. Disobedient. Let that sink in. Remember what he said. I'll use whatever terms I want. What does the Bible say about adding to and subtracting from the Word of God? It's almost like it's abominable how it treats people. The plagues and everything in the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah. Disobedient and under every good work reprobate. Anything else at this point... Anything else he tries to stand for that might be truth, let's say he stands for eternal security, it's reprobate because he's preaching a false god. You say he stands for dispensational teaching, it's reprobate because he stands for a false god. He's promoting a false Jesus. It's all reprobate and under every good work, it's good work, it's a good work to preach eternal security. It's good work to preach the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ, all these major doctrines, instruction and righteousness. But when you got somebody who's preaching a false Jesus, their good works are reprobate. I get this from so many of the brethren, but he's so right on everything else. If they're wrong on what Bible they're using, they're not using a King James Bible, they're using one of the Bible perversions that are Catholic Bibles, drop them. If they teach a different plan of salvation than that that's found in the King James Bible, which is repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance leads to salvation. True biblical repentance leads to salvation. Uh, belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. It's down here. It's not up here. Confess both in prayer. They, all three of these lead to salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Unto salvation. Repentance says, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. 
to salvation. It comes before. And confession is made unto salvation. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but confession, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay? You confess both in prayer. Why? The next verse down, I don't have the actual addresses. I got the verses memorized. Um, in Romans, I think it is, the next verse down says, so that you prove that you're not ashamed. That's why you confess both in prayer. And then you ask God to save you. Call upon the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. That's the true plan of salvation. If they don't use the King James Bible and believe it's God's perfect written word in English, and they, don't, and they teach a different plan of salvation, get away from them. The third thing I'd say is be careful. They might start out by saying, I'm a King James Bible believer, and they might have the Bible. Then they might say, well, yeah, I teach the plan of salvation according to the Bible. But after a while, they're always going to start getting off on the plan of salvation when they start preaching another Jesus. Be careful. In Corinthians, it talks about how they come in and they try to preach another Jesus. What happens when they're preaching another Jesus? They start bringing in another gospel. They try to get you to receive another spirit, an antichrist spirit. All right? Those are the three biggest things you got to watch for. All right? This man is supposed to be a preacher also on YouTube. He preaches a false Jesus Christ. At this point, stay away from him. And he could be right in these other areas. It's reprobate. It's pointless. If he's not believing, he already proved that he does not believe that this is God's perfect written word. If he did, he'll probably say he does. Because if he truly did, he wouldn't add to it. He would simply accept it as it is. I say this further down, getting ahead of myself, but Peter Ruffin once said, I don't correct this book. It corrects me. I go into this book with the attitude of, Lord, you show me what you want me to see. Not forcing it to say what I want to say. Remember what he said over a hundred times? It talks about, it explains the Trinity. He's getting it to say what he wants it to say. And if God wanted it that simple, he would have put Trinity in here as a title for himself instead of Godhead. And I've already shown a video where they're getting away from, the, where they say Godhead just means Jesus has the qualities of God. And it has nothing to do with the Trinity, but the Trinity is truth. So they're still preaching the Trinity, but they're separating the two completely where Godhead has nothing to do with the Trinity. So they're getting you away from the Godhead of the Bible completely. Right. Romans 1, 2, 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. So they are without excuse. We are made in the likeness of God, body, soul, and spirit. The Godhead, body, soul, spirit. It's very simple to anybody that has the Holy Spirit in them and says, Lord, you show me truth. All right. It's that simple. So I put that stuff. I put in here. Your problem is that you are not going off God's word, and he's not. But man's words. He's adding to scripture. You take man's word and try to force them into God's word. This is what the Bible says about people like that. John 8, 47. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye hear them, ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. This man is not of God. Or else he would hear the words. Godhead. The Bible says Godhead. The Holy Spirit, you should be saying, the Bible says Godhead, it's Godhead. Get away from me. Now, if they said, I believe the Godhead, God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, you have some wiggle room to start talking to them because they believe the Scriptures. They're not using the word Trinity because it's not in the Bible at all. But I have yet to come across one person who says, Trinity's pagan, but I believe in the Godhead of the Bible, God three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I haven't found one person that does that. Anybody that says God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they'll say the Trinity, also known as the Godhead, or they'll just say Trinity every time. Okay. Why? Because the Godhead is not the same as the Trinity. They're not the same thing. Okay. He hears them not because he's not of God. At this point, he's still vehemently defending paganism. I put on here, get saved today, repent and believe in that Jesus Christ is the Godhead. Colossians 2.9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay. There it is, Godhead bodily, one God. Jesus is the person of the Godhead because he's the body, he has a soul in him, and he has a spirit in him. The soul is God the Father, the spirit is the Holy Spirit. 
He is the image. I didn't put that one down. He's the image of the Godhead. You can see Jesus Christ. That's the Godhead. You can't see the soul and you can't see the spirit. Okay. The Lord Jesus Christ found in the KJB for English-speaking people. 1 John 5.13, I put in here, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. And people always leave this part out. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. It's because we have a perfect written record that tells us the name Jesus Christ, it tells us who he is, and it tells us what he did. It tells us who we are, and it tells us what we did, and our need for Jesus Christ and who he is and what he did. Okay? If it wasn't for a perfect written word, God preserving his word down through the centuries, you wouldn't be capable of believing in Jesus Christ. Wouldn't even be possible, according to Scripture. Okay? I linked the gospel message to him. And then when I saw him, I finally got into it. When I saw him use that term, I'll, I'll use whatever term I want. I was like, he just showed himself to be false. You'd never catch me saying that. You'll never catch me saying, I'm going to say whatever I want, whenever I want. My thing is this, and when I'm off, and people have corrected me. I've done this in videos. I used to say alcoholic versus drunkard. I used to say you could fall into sin, and I had a brother say chapter and verse. And I looked into it and it said, well, no, the scripture says you can fall into temptation. But if you sin, it's because you chose to sin. All right? I've been corrected when I've said things that aren't in the Bible. And I'm pointing over here to the Bible again. All right? And I've been corrected by brethren. And when they go to correct me, I'm like, okay, you're right. It's not in the Bible. I need to stop saying it that way. I need to say it the Bible way. All right? But I said this, Mr. Christian said, I will use whatever terms I want, and I'd said this to Piper LT so she'd understand, Sister in Christ, that, and that is all you need to know about him. And it is. It's all you need to know about him. The moment they say, I'll say whatever I want, however I want, who cares about, basically saying who cares about the Word of God, I'll do what I want, not what God wants. That's who you're dealing with. Someone who's their own God, their own authority. His authority is not the authority of Scripture. He's his own authority. Genesis 3, 1 through 5. All right. This is the big one that we all know a lot. I'll see if I can make it bigger again. See how that works. A little bit bigger. Genesis 3, 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said. That's what it comes down to. I can use whatever term I want. Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of the evil, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the garden, trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it. She added to God's word, lest ye die. She's doing what he did. He's adding to God's word. And here's what the snake says. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You start out with, yea, if God said, then they can be their own gods. So if you get them to doubt the word of God, yea, if God said, this should it really be the Godhead? I mean, you know, Trinity. And then it goes back to, you can be as gods, knowing good and evil. I believe the Trinity, I can use whatever term I want. I believe Trinity is a better term than Godhead. And I'm going to use term. And the thing that gets me is, Trinity is a title that they're using for God. Godhead is not a term. We always say Bible terms, but also Bible words. Godhead is a title for God. Okay. Let's go back over here. Trinity, not found. <laughs> okay, let's look at all three times it's mentioned. Capital G, Godhead. Capital G, Godhead. Capital G, Godhead. It is a title for for God. It's a title. Okay? It's not just some term that we're just, a, it's a title for God. These people always, it's not in here, but these people always get me that it's like, what if we decide to say Joe? You can say Joe instead of Jesus. That's okay. Or maybe Billy instead of Jesus. They'll look at you saying, that's blasphemous. You're trying to change the name of Jesus Christ? It's blasphemous. Yet that's exactly what they're doing. 
They're changing a title for God Almighty for a pagan title, Satan. A worldly pagan title. That's exactly what they're doing. And they don't see nothing wrong with it. He thinks he's a crusader and I'm defending the word of God. No, he's not. He just admitted he's not. I'll use whatever term I want. Who cares what the Bible says? It's what I want. He showed who he really serves. Yea, hath God said, and his... We're down here now. He showed who he really serves. Yea, hath God said, and he is his own God. He is his own final authority. He can use whatever terms he wants. Who cares what title God chose? Exactly. It's not thus saith the Lord. It's thus saith Mr. Christian. I put <laughs> Corinthians because I said he's not a Christian. According to the word of God. He's denying who God is. Who Jesus is. 1 Timothy 6.5 for first disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. At this point, we shouldn't have anything to do with them. It's that simple. Okay. Uh, sincere Milk of the Word said, I said this to a Trinitarian in the comments of one of Brian's videos today. Jesus said, The Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Was and is there a miniature man slash person called the Father inside of Jesus pulling levers and flipping switches? Or could it be that Jesus' soul is the Father? How do they get around that verse? They can't. That's a great verse. Um, I don't want to highlight that because I don't want to just say it. Let's get over here and let's look it up. Here it is, John 14, 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? That's how they're saying it's one. Yes, you have the soul, but the soul, my body's in the soul and the soul's in the body. You can, I can't explain how it works, brother. That's the mystery of godliness when it comes to how it works. I can only tell you what it is, what the Bible says it is. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Okay, that's what he's saying, and it's like these Trinitarians, if they're two separate people, God the Father is not God the Son, that's really, that's exactly, and these people can't get it. I've, I already said this already, but I put it down here, Peter Ruckman said it right, when you look into the Word of God, you do not correct it, it corrects you. People go into the Bible trying to get it to say what they want it to say and wind up correcting God's Word. I've been guilty of that. I go in there and try to get to say what I want, and the study doesn't go too well, and I'm like, okay, Lord, I have to get to a point where I stop and go, Lord, show me. I'm not getting it. I'm making a big mess of this study because I go into it trying to get it to say what I want it to say, and I have to drop that and say, Lord, show me what you want, what it says. Lord, open my eyes, and you show me what you say in your word, not what I want it to say. And so many twi people twist, twist scripture out there because they're trying to get to say what they want it to say. Right? I said, Brian had it right on when he said, in order to teach the Trinity, you have to go outside the Bible. In other words, you have to add to God's Word. Or subtract, but mainly add to God's Word. Because if they subtract, they get caught. You know, it's one thing, if, uh, if I had multiple coins, I don't have multiple coins, but if I have, it's one thing that if you have a, a stack of coins, if I slide one more coin in there, you won't notice anything. But if there's only one coin there, and I try to take that coin, you'll catch me. What happened to all the coins? There's, you know what I'm saying? That's the whole thing. They, with the Trinity, they mostly like to add to God's Word than subtract, even though that is subtracting. A lot of things they add... They basically say it's the same as this, it's the same as that, but they're replacing those words. So they're subtracting. But they'll try to say we're just adding to God's word. You're still not supposed to add. People are getting crazier and crazier out there. They try everything they can to follow anyone and everyone but Jesus Christ and his word. And that's what I find a lot. People keep doing it all the time. They keep following people 100%. I read that 100% right. They keep following people that they're following men. Okay, I've been accused. Oh, you're Denlinger, right? All right, I don't follow Brian Denlinger as far as what he says. I follow his teachings, and I follow along in the King James Bible. And there's things I disagree with Brother Brian on. Okay, there are some things I disagree with them on. 
Why? Because I followed along and realized uh, you're not comparing Scripture with Scripture in this area, or in this area, it's not there. You're, you're, see, even everybody falls into the trap of trying to make the Bible say what they want it to say, and at some point, God will get them back on the right track. I don't agree with Brother Brian on everything. Okay? But you get people that they'll tell you they they'll tell me that I'm following I'm a denlinger right yet you look at their teachings and everything it's all based off of what men say and philosophy and and everything it's like it doesn't line up with scripture okay who's following a man I'm trying to follow the word of God they're following the words of men uh, Billy Rader said the visualization gave me a good chuckle it's talking about uh, God the Father being inside and Jesus is just a robot and he's pulling buttons and everything okay that's how ridiculous the Trinity is. Right? But here's the thing. The key word to get from this is he said that he's about absolute truth, and that's what the Bible teaches when, he te when it teaches the Trinity. And he said it's just so simple. But then I, as we got down, he finally came out and showed his true colors. I will use whatever term I want. It's not about what the Bible says. It's about what he wants. Right? Now we get down to the last comment here. It says, by the way, I found it, and he's responding to Piper LT when she said she was waiting for somebody up here to say, and this is what made me laugh. This made me laugh a lot. Piper LT, I know he probably didn't mean it this way, but it still made me laugh. She said, truthfully, I thought one of you folks would say, post the verse with Trinity in, with Trinity in the King James Bible. You know, the word Trinity is what she's saying in the King James Bible. I'll wait. If you cannot find it, stop using that word. That's what she's saying. Not the term tree, like it's basically there. The word Trinity, where is it at in Scripture, in the Bible? Notice what he comes back and says. By the way, I found it, but we'll not be wasting it on someone who will just find a random excuse to not accept it. I started laughing and I was like, he found it? He found the word Trinity in the King James Bible? Come on, show me. Show me. <laughs> I know he's talking about the term where he can say, I can show you where it describes the Trinity. That's what their whole argument is. I can show you where it describes the Trinity. They can make the Bible say anything they want when they pervert Scripture, take things out of context. Where is the capital word Trinity? Is there? He's like, by the way, I found it, but I'm not going to waste it on someone who will just find a random excuse to not accept it. There are, here it is, there are better people to teach. So now I'm a bad person and not worth his time because I stand to the King James Bible and this guy here does not. Okay, Brothers and sisters in Christ, the whole point of this is I stand and I will always be immediately stand for this book right here. I'm going to keep picking it up. The King James Bible. This is my, the reason it's so huge, this is my large print. Let's see. I'm trying to go through, see if I can find it. I'm going through uh, <laughs> Ephesians, and I'm doing all my highlighting, and I'm getting through that book. It's gonna my my winters here are very rainy. That's when I'm gonna be catching up on a lot of the brethren studies and uh, whatnot, because it's gonna be raining all the time during the winter around here, and I, that's when I do a lot of my catching up on video watching. Right now, I spend a lot of time outside with the Lord, doing some work, and doing my studies for the ministry. So I'm not cut up on watching a lot of the brethren's other brethren out there that are teaching. I just I don't have a lot of time, but I will always stand for this book, okay? I always will. I wish this man did. He, and the thing that gets me is he, and I bet you in his head, he actually believes that he's standing for this book. But something so simple as where's Trinity at in the Bible? It's not there. What's the, what's the title that God chose? Godhead. Get Trinity out of your vocabulary. God didn't choose that word. Stop using it. Now, there's nothing wrong with saying a word out in the world when you're just talking to people. I'm not saying if you say the word Trinity, you're lost. I'm saying that when you try to relate anything to this book as a Christian and say the Word of God says or the Word of God teaches, it better be in there. The Word of God, because his thing, the Word of God teaches Trinity. So then where's the capital T Trinity for God, a title for God in here? It's not in there. Okay, where's rapture at in here? It's not in here. Right. I even got a, I mean, I can see where people get it, but I was talking to someone about, um, what's the one thing? They say self-righteousness, self-righteousness. And I'm like, well, honestly, chapter and verse on self, where it says self-righteousness. Right. 
they're like, well, it's there, so. We have unrighteousness, okay, it should live unto righteousness, but what if it's one word? Nope. And my whole point about this, and it's, I'm not attacking anybody who says self-righteousness, brother, it's just Christ. But the whole point when I was doing a study once, I was looking at it, and it's like self-righteousness is actually not in the Bible. The Bible teaches that men can have self-righteousness. Well, chapter and verse. But I'll show you the verse that it does say. It says they go about to establish there is, their own righteousness. And that's where we get the term, people that use the term self-righteousness from. I'm not against it, but I've been trying to get away from it, saying that they're going about to establish their own righteousness. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. If you deny Jesus Christ, if you've refused to repent and believe and confess both in prayer and ask God, even to the point of begging God to save you, that was me, begging God to save you, if you refuse to do that, you're going to have to try to get into heaven on your works. I said try. I didn't say you will. I said try. It's all going to be based on your own works. What's going on with your own works? You're trying to go about to establish your own righteousness. And what happens? We already said that. Help me learn to... T doing things this way Help me to learn how to spell a lot of the words in the Bible. Because you have to get it right in this in this program. Okay, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. You deny Jesus Christ. You refuse to repent, believe, confess both the prayer and ask God to save you. Okay, you're going about trying to establish your own righteousness. That's what the Bible says. It's not self-righteousness, because you have no righteousness. You keep going about to establish your own righteousness. But it says here, under every good work, reprobate. All your good works mean nothing. If you're denying Jesus Christ. Right? I wish and I pray that this was just, um, that this guy's just confused that he believes the Godhead of the King James Bible and he's just using Trinity terms. But my biggest thing against this, this man that's claiming to be a Christian is that his attitude is, is that I can use whatever term I want. He can do whatever he wants. He can add to Scripture if he feels like it. He can take away from Scripture if he feels like it. He can do whatever he wants. And then because we stand to the Bible, first he, find, he makes it out like she found Trinity in the Bible. Show us. Come on, you found it. Show us. And then he's, oh, but I'm not going to waste it on someone like you guys. <laughs> there are better people out there to teach. Like the Bible says, be gone. You go ahead and have your pagan Trinity. You go ahead and have the world. It's all yours. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So brothers and sisters of Christ, continue defending the Godhead and rejecting the Trinity. It's not in Scripture. It's not in Scripture at all. Capital T Trinity is not there. God in three persons is not there. All right. God the Father is there, but God the Son, God the Holy Spirit isn't there. It's all about promoting multiple gods, and it's all about tearing Jesus down where he's not God fully and completely. And this guy said he believes it is, but he's defending something that's not in the Bible, Trinity. Okay, And he probably uses the term God in three persons. Then he doesn't believe God is, full, is fully good. Jesus is fully God. He probably says God the Son God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. He doesn't believe Jesus is God fully and completely. What does the Bible say, one well, before we go, what does the Bible say about a double-minded man? That's what we're dealing with here. Maybe that's two words. There's James 1 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He's God full and completely, but he's a third of God. He's God full and completely, but he's the second member of the Godhead. There's only one God, but there's God the Son, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. What is that? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And this man is unstable. And he came out and just showed it. I can use whatever term I want. That's how you can tell when you, then someone's not a Bible believer. They'll tell you that they're a Bible believer. There's two ways to tell. You can get them with their words. 
they'll add to or subtract from this Word of God. Or sometimes they'll put on a good show with their words, but they're not living it. And when you catch them not living it, then you'll see their words. They'll start correcting this book. They'll start changing it. They'll start adding to it or subtracting it when you catch them not living it. But it always comes down to you'll catch them at their words. Eventually they'll say something that shows who they really are. If they're truly saved, he would have been like, well, I need to stick to the Bible, and he'd stick with Godhead. I've had people, very few, but I've had people that used to be vehemently Trinity people turn back to the Bible. And when I taught, told them, I said, hey, where's Trinity? That's my only problem. Before we even get into the Trinity, what the Trinity really teaches versus what the Godhead of the Bible teaches, let's just stick with something as simple as where's capital T, T Trinity for God, a title for God in the Bible? Okay? And I always throw that at them. What about Jesus? The Bible says there is one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Okay. Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's only one name, and that's Jesus Christ. What if someone came along and started saying, hey, I think we should also use these other names instead of just Jesus Christ. We should use Bob. We should use Joe. You know, you'd look at him and go, you're crazy. But when we tell them the same thing when it comes to Godhead versus the Trinity, they look at us like we're crazy. They don't have the same foundation that you and I do, brothers and sisters of Christ. Keep standing for the Word of God. Keep standing for the Word of God. So how can you tell when someone's not a Bible believer? When they say, I can use any term I please. Not, I, I'm going to stick with the Bible, what the Bible says. He can use any term he will please. Then he said he could find, <laughs> find Trinity in the Bible. I know he probably meant he could prove that Trinity is in there. Like the, He can prove that it, it teaches a Trinity. But he made it out like he's saying that it can teach that the actual word Trinity is in the King James Bible. And he's just not going to show it to us. <laughs> that's like, because that's what she said. So um, that'll be it for this. Just want to do a really quick thing, throw it out there. Brothers and sisters in Christ, continue to stand for the Word of God. Uh, this went on with so many, because a lot of my comments, I only did one comment towards him. And that's all you do. My one comment towards him, I show, told him that he doesn't believe in the Word of God. Um, the rest of them were comments to other brothers. But when you get to a person where he just really doesn't, he's not a King James Bible believer. I don't know what I did, but uh, this was my main one towards him. I might have made two comments to him, but the whole point is, is uh, I want to make sure because I, I don't want to be a liar. I simply, I made two comments to him because I made a comment up here, do you stand for the pagan trinity? And he says, I stand for the truth, which is in other words, yes, he stands for the pagan trinity. So I came through here, threw some scriptures at him and everything after reading all the comments and how he's vehemently defending the Trinity. And I just gave him the gospel message and pray that the Bible says, Paul is telling him, prove your own selves, check whether you be in the faith. Just because I link the gospel message to somebody doesn't mean that you're automatically lost because I said you are. Okay, there's nothing wrong. If someone linked me the plan of salvation, the true plan of salvation, repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. That's how you find God's grace, salvation. Okay, if someone linked me that, I wouldn't throw a fit. I wouldn't say, well, you're saying I'm lost. i just say, amen, that's the plan of salvation I got saved off of. Amen. All right. So... With people like this, don't get into a debate. Don't get into a debate, brothers and sisters in Christ. I was just very proud because there's a lot of brethren in here and sister in Christ that's just standing for the Word of God. Uh, be careful. You know, I don't want to get into the thing where sisters in Christ are correcting men online. That's, you know, was usurping the authority of man. But you can throw in scriptures and say, hey, what about this? What about that? What about this first? What about that? And, and maybe that will help open their eyes and wake them up as a sister in Christ. But don't get into a debate with them. Don't get into an argument with them. He showed his true colors. Preach the gospel to him at that point and, and let it go. Okay? But I haven't done a video on the Godhead in a while. And I just really wanted to say, hey, brothers and sisters in Christ, I love all of you. Keep standing for the Godhead. Okay? Keep standing for the Word of God. The Word of God chose Godhead. Try to 
do studies and then when someone says something and you have all these terms when I first got saved I knew so many terms that were false I was taught false and I was taught lies how traditions of men have added so much to scripture and over time I had to learn to get a lot of that out okay and I just encourage you brothers and sisters in Christ to get it out of your vocabulary too I don't say rapture anymore as far as when I refer to this Bible the only time I actually usually say rapture is when I'm correcting people rapture is not in the Bible but when I'm talking about the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, that's exactly what I say. I don't say the catching away of the body of Christ, also known as the, as the rapture. Don't do that. Don't say uh, catching away of the body of Christ, falsely called the rapture. And that's there, but you're still getting people to relate rapture to it. I just say get rid of it completely and just say catch away the body of Christ. I've had a couple brethren ask me, what is catching? I don't get it. What's the catching away? And I say, well, have you heard of that seven-year period that they like to falsely call the, the Great Tribulation or the Tribulation? And then you can say, people say falsely call rap. It opens a door. And you say, well, the Bible says it's the time of Jacob's trouble. And you show them the scripture. And, and the Bible says we will be caught up, which is why we say catching away. But we're going to be caught up. Okay? We're going to be caught. We're not going into that time period. So stick to the word of God, brothers and sisters of Christ. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus. Thank you for watching.